So in this video, we're going to talk about thin film interference. Uh, and this is probably something that you're, uh, you've at least been introduced to in uh, either your high school physics class or some physics course in college. And uh, just briefly restated, it's where we've got some bulk material with some refractive index, let's say N2, and some thin film uh, with a refractive index N1. And so this thickness might be on the order of uh, nanometers to microns. And when we send a plane wave at this film, or equivalently a ray, uh, we know that some of that ray will just bounce straight off, but some will get transmitted into the film and then bounce off, and then it'll come back to join our original uh, ray that bounced off. And if we can get this ray and this ray to destructively interfere with each other, then we can actually get less reflection from this interface than we would otherwise. And we do this by having a phase difference between these waves of pi. That's just, uh, and that's the same thing as saying that one has traveled an extra half wavelength uh, compared to the other. So one looks like this, the other looks like this, and together uh, they cancel out and give you nothing. But the question is now, can we do exactly nothing? Can we get these waves to perfectly uh, destructively interfere? And the answer is going to require uh, Fresnel's equations. So we're going to analyze in this video thin films uh, rather than using general uh, generic arguments to use uh, Fresnel's equations. And we're going to get a quantitative answer for when this is possible. So let's begin. Uh, let's say we've got our incident plane wave, so it's just, uh, or we've got our incident ray coming down, and we're hitting a material of refractive index, I'm going to say N1, and I'm going to say that this material is N0, so maybe this is air, maybe it's some other medium, uh, but in general it's, it's going to be N0, and then our film is N1, and our substrate, or uh, semi-infinite in the downward direction is has refractive index N2. Now as this plane wave initially hits this surface, some of it is going to get reflected. And now that we have Fresnel's equations, we know exactly how much is going to get reflected. Uh, the amount R01. And so the notation that I'm using is R01 is the amount reflected when you're going from medium 0 to medium 1. And uh, we previously figured out for waves at normal incidence, that was just N0 minus N1 over N0 plus N1. But that's not the end of the story, because some of our wave gets transmitted. How much? Well, now we know that too. Just T01. Uh, and rather than writing T01 in terms of the refractive indices, uh, I'm going to write it in a more convenient way for us, so we only have to deal with one variable. Uh, it's just 1 plus R01. And you can get that from the math, or you can get that from our original arguments regarding electric fields. And now as the wave travels from this interface to this interface, it's going to pick up a certain phase, which is going to depend on the thickness of the film. So it's going to pick up a phase equal to, actually let's call this, uh, let's call this L. So the phase increase, let's say delta phi, is just going to be equal to uh, k, k naught times the refractive index N1 times L. And so now our traveling wave, which I'm assuming looks like e to the j omega t minus kz, if we call this the z direction, has picked up an extra e to the minus j kz, or sorry, kl, we said, uh, or just e to the minus delta j delta phi, just so we don't have to keep writing out all of these all of these terms. And then the wave is going to reflect off the back interface, uh, and we know how much is going to reflect off. It, that's just R12. So replace refractive index 0 with 1 and 1 with 2, and you have uh, what R12 is. Uh, and then the wave is going to travel back another distance L. It's going to pick up another phase, and then some of it is going to get transmitted uh, an amount T10, and then these two waves have the opportunity to interfere with each other. And in terms of R0, R01, we can just write T10 as 1 minus R01, because R01 is just uh, 
minus R10. And you can see that just by plugging in, uh, swapping N0 and N1, uh, when they swap, you pick up a negative sign. So if we add up these two waves, or we add up their amplitude, we're going to get R01 plus, and then we have to account for everything that happens to the second wave. So T01 times e to the minus j delta phi times R12 uh, times e to the minus j delta phi times T10. And we can lump these two e to the j's into one single term. So it's just e to the j2, e to the minus j2 delta phi. And we have our T10, that should be T10, not TR0, T10 and T01. So this is the result of our first, uh, the first set of reflections that we had. But now we also have uh, another set of reflections. So our wave keeps bouncing around inside this film, and then it comes back out, keeps bouncing around, and it comes back out. And so we have to worry about all of these waves, uh, an infinite sum of these waves. So how about our, let's just calculate the third wave and then we'll just see if we can spot a pattern. So we've got uh, our third wave. It needs to be first uh, transmitted into the film. So T01, and then it picks up a phase, e to the minus, or let's, uh, yeah, so e to the minus j delta phi. And then it reflects off the back, R12. Then it picks up another phase, e to the minus j delta phi. And then it reflects off the front, R10. Then it reflects off, then it picks up another phase. Uh, actually, sorry, e to the, just e to the minus j delta phi. So we're right here right now. And then it bounces off the back again, R12. Uh, and then finally, it picks up its last phase, uh, e to the minus j delta phi, as it travels from here to here. And then finally, it gets transmitted out, t10. Whew. Fortunately, this is not as gross as it looks, uh, because we have all these factors uh, in common between these two terms. So we've got our t01, we've got our t10, we've got our r12, and our e to the minus j Two delta phi. So if we rewrite this uh, just real quick, R01 plus T01, T10, R12, e to the minus J2 delta phi, delta phi. Uh, then we have one plus, this becomes just really simple. Uh, R01, or sorry, R10, R12, e to the minus J2 delta phi. And if we were to keep adding stuff and adding stuff, we would just be raising this term to the power, so this is to the power one, then we'd be raising it to the power two, and then three, and then so on. So this is just an infinite sum going from n equals zero to infinity of r10, r12, e to the minus j, two delta phi to the n. And we know what this is. We can calculate it, assuming this, is, uh, this term is less than one less than magnitude one. This is just one over one minus R10, R12, e to the minus j, two delta phi. It's just one over one minus this thing. And so let's take our heads out of the math for a moment. What were we trying to do? Uh, we were trying to add up all of these reflected waves, uh, which are interfering with our original reflected wave. And then we want this to totally destructively interfere. So we want this sum of all these waves to add up to an amplitude of zero. And so we want our overall sum, uh, which we can rewrite now using our infinite sum. So just this block of letters, r12 e to the minus j2 delta phi over one minus r10 r12 e to the minus j2 delta phi. And the hardest part about this is really keeping track of the subscripts. I've messed up a couple of times and it's, it's caused me to pull my hair out. Um, it's not super fun. But now we can just plug in uh, all of these different coefficients. So in terms of, I like to plug everything in in terms of R01. So this guy will get its sign flipped because R10 is just minus R01. So that becomes a plus. 
and these t0s and t10s we can expand and setting this all equal to zero you'll get a lot of stuff cancel canceling out and what you'll end up with is just this uh, you'll end up with something that says r01 has to be equal to minus r12 e to the minus j2 delta phi and that's way way simpler uh, than than this equation or the infinite sum that we had before this is actually tractable this is actually easy easy to relatively easy to deal with now we know what r01 and r12 are we can calculate them in terms of the refractive indices uh, n0 n1 n2 uh, and these we're assuming are all real numbers they're not they don't have any complex values uh, associated with them they they might but that's another story um, so this guy also has to be real which means it has to either be plus one or it has to be minus one and so first let's take the case where it's plus one and let's just see where that leads us uh, then in that case we'll have r01 has to equal negative r12 or if we plug in the refractive indices uh, n0 plus n1 that has to equal negative n1 minus n2 over n1 plus n2 and if you solve this you'll get something really interesting you'll get that this is satisfied when n0 is equal to n2 and uh, e to the this guy uh, being plus one means that two delta phi has to be some multiple uh, of two pi and we're just going to assume it's it's the first multiple to make things simple uh, or the length of the film the thickness of the film has to be equal to the free space wavelength over two times n1 so if we had uh, n0 equal to n2 and we had l equal to half the wavelength in the material then we would have perfect reflection and you might say well uh, doesn't this mean that our uh, if n0 is air that n2 also has to be air and yeah it does but uh, this this is a, actually a pretty common case maybe we have like a glass uh, a glass plate suspended in air for example then this is n0 this is n0 both are equal to 1 and if this is equal to half of the wavelength over n1 then we get zero reflection for a wave that's coming in like this and bouncing off of this uh, glass film we get total transmission so it's as if the film isn't even there it's as if the glass slide isn't even there so that's kind of cute, uh, but what if this number here is equal to negative one? Uh, in other words, two delta phi is equal to pi plus some multiple of two pi. And we're gonna assume that m equals zero for now, just for simplicity. Uh, this will mean that our length is equal to lambda naught over four times n1. It also means that r01 is then going to be equal to positive r12 because that exponential is negative and if you plug in the refractive indices uh, into this equation you'll get that n1 squared has to equal n0 n2 in other words to get perfect reflection off of a single layer or sorry uh, perfect destructive interference no reflection off of a single layer we need to have n1 equal the geometric mean of n0 and n2 or the square root of the two multiplied together and if this is the case then we can actually get perfect uh, destructive interference at least at a at a single wavelength and so if you're trying to engineer an anti-reflective coating uh, and you know what your substrate material is uh, and you know where your uh, wave is coming from probably air uh, and maybe this is glass for example then you can choose a material that has a refractive index uh, that will give you perfect destructive interference and then you only need one layer and it's that's that's actually super cool so I hope you enjoyed this video uh, if you did please give it a like down below and subscribe to my channel uh, also if you have any questions or comments please feel free to post them down below and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can and thanks for watching I'll see you next time